Yeah, tuck us that up, George. Good. This it, Danny? Yeah. This is it, you guys. This is it. This is it. He's ready to go. Go, <laughs> Danny! Hi and welcome to Behind the Adventure. I'm Seamus. And I'm Justin. We just got back from Gran Canaria. We were shooting Cascadia with Danny McCaskill. We got some really amazing footage. We're gonna show you a little bit of what went into this project. We had a pretty big crew on this one. Uh, Seamus and I had Sean and Jenny from GoPro supporting us. Danny was there with his filmer, Robbie Mead. We had John and George from Vision Ramps. They were building. Wow, perfect. First time, every time. And we had Dave Mackerson there just doing safety and helping out. Danny came to us with an idea to shoot on rooftops. We needed a colorful location as we wanted to have a very powerful visually and then just have that natural flow of cascading from the top to the bottom. We had a pretty good idea where we could find this, so we headed out to the Canary Islands to see what we could find. There's like a domed. Is it quite close to the road or? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to have gaps in the street. Yeah. But just as long as there's a kind of cascade. I yeah. really would like to kind of try to as much as possible stay on, you know, off street level. We had a location manager, Ian, who was really helpful in actually getting up onto these rooftops. It's really hard to just walk up to someone's front door and ask if we can get on their roof. I mean, that was only half the battle. We still had to find something that fit all of the aesthetics we were looking for. Something that looked right, something that was rideable, something that, you know, would transition into something else. So it, we looked at a lot of rooftops, we climbed a lot of stairs. So basically, you know, like say hop to wall ride, to ride along here. I mean, what, what do you think is better, like a trick here to then there, or like gap, gap to here? I kind of wanna, wouldn't want to do that many times, I could maybe do it twice, so max. It's just like heavy. We had one chance to get these shots. So what we did is Robbie was handling the follow cam and we put four cameras on his rig. We had one in 4K that was kind of our wide master, and then we had one in 1080, 120 narrow. That gave us the option to cut in. We wanted a tight cutaway and we wanted something really slow-mo. We had that option. We had one that was in 1080, 60, just as a clean, just in case, worst case scenario, something got on a lens or something wasn't framed perfectly. We had that option. And as a fourth camera, we were running photos in a half second time lapse. So we had that camera there, just capturing all of the moments to get photos as well as video. Boxing shoes! Yeah. Yeah. Extra hops. A key person for me to be working with on this film was uh, Robbie Mead. You know, when it comes to sort of the gimbal work on this film, you know, he's definitely the guy I want to have behind that. It's just as physical for him as it is for me, so he's having to kind of run through this shot each time. He'll basically keep going as long as I'll keep going, so that process um, together, you know, as a kind of relationship that kind of gets these shots done in the end. One of the biggest challenges coming into this film was actually getting into places that you could shoot Danny. We'd get to a roof, we'd walk around it and see what's actually possible. So being able to stay close with a wider lens was perfect because we could actually move around and actually get very dynamic shots in a place that was very tight and didn't have much room for movement. There were some locations that we just couldn't follow Danny over, and this is where the head cam became crucial. We set his head cam to 1440 to make sure we could see all the way to the ground and the horizon at the same time. We also shot at 60 frames per second, which allowed us to slow down the footage for the most important moments. Danny had come to us with a song that he really wanted to use. 
So one of the things that was really great about having a song already picked out is we were able to string out each of the segments of the song and say, here's this location, here's this location, and have an idea of how everything was going to look coming into it. And then I'm get in and out of that with all the different stuff. And, right, then, and then this is G turn. Oh, I was going to so maybe G turn over the, the block. And then turn around to do the run up. Yeah. And then boom. At the locations, we wouldn't just think about the shot itself, the movement, the riding. We'd also work out what's the best way to make the riding cut in time. A few of the lines, we'd actually listen to the song. Danny would sing it in his head whilst he was riding down a stair set. Most people can't do this stuff just concentrating. He'll be there riding, singing a song inside of his head to make sure he's jumping in time with it. We could play it to some music. Wow. Not bad, is it? It's pretty good. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's pretty on beat. The thing is, I'm going in the step. Like, I don't know what we can do better. No, I think that's pretty the, other, the only other thing that we could do to say turn it even better would be sure. to cut. So, say, halfway down there. So, like, I mean, it's a sick yeah. shot coming from top to bottom on yeah. the lobby. But you could go... Cut the head cam. Right, they're coming past you in, like, a routine. Could you keep an eye out for the pigeons and then kind of duck away? Yep, I got them. They're here. Okay, they're coming in. Coming in hot. Three, two, one. Ah. Does someone have the pigeon remote? They're going behind you again. Oh, no, hold on. Right, they're going to come past. This is worth it. This should be absolutely amazing. Let's go. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks for taking an in-depth look at how we did it. Stay tuned for more from Behind the Adventure.